All right, this will be quick and dirty. Thank you everybody for coming out. We just wanted to make sure that we were shedding some light on what many New Yorkers experienced yesterday. Uh, and we want New Yorkers to know that my office and other offices and community groups heard them. First, um, I just want to set the stage. We know uh, the Board of Elections had a difficult time. We are still haven't fully recovered from a pandemic. We're still going through it. We know the past two months, three months have been very tough. But as with most things, what the pandemic did was expose and exacerbate um, many existing problems uh, within the system. And we're here today because we know November is coming up. We're going to see exponentially more people who are support, who are coming out to vote. If we don't start planning more, we're going to even see more problems and pretty much have a disaster on our hands. So yesterday we started getting complaints days before uh, the actual election day as people were not getting their absentee ballots. Uh, they weren't receiving them. They weren't be able to confirm that the Board of Elections had, had received them themselves. Um, so there was a lot of issues just with the absentee ballots. And then yesterday, poll sites didn't open on time. Uh, poll workers were not there. People got, uh, some people got the wrong ballots uh, for the district they were in. Some people got half a ballot, national or the local, not both. Um, those things are probably training related, uh, and we have to focus on that as well. So we need these things to be focused on right now. Of course, there's also coordination. There were some complaints. I'll let the truck crash. There were some complaints uh, that people didn't get to the polling sites because the trains didn't open until 5 a.m. And so those are things that we have to also consider. We need everybody to be talking to each other and communicating because November, obviously, is another important election. We did write a letter to uh, the executive director, Michael Ryan, and the Board of Elections before Election Day about what we were seeing with the absentee ballots. We plan another, getting another letter to them today about what we heard and witnessed uh, yesterday. And we hope to get results. This is an important election. Uh, to me, this wasn't a test run. Every election is very important. So we should have gotten this right. Although we do understand some of the mitigating circumstances, it really did exacerbate underlying problems that were there uh, to begin with, and we have to get them fixed. Uh, we do want to lift up Senator Alexander Biaggi. Uh, she has a bill out now that uh, will con concretize some of the changes that the governor made because of the pandemic. This is important. We have always made it difficult for people to vote. Um, we should make it as easy as possible, I believe, including an absentee. Uh, let's keep whatever was here now uh, in terms of who's allowed to vote absentee. Let's keep it permanently. Other states have done it. If, in fact, we had been used to this type of voting, it might have also made it easier this time around. Let's just begin to get in the process of used to uh, the ease of voting, whether it's early voting, whether it's uh, absentee voting, uh, whether it's uh, same-day registration. These are things that we have to stop resisting. And once we stop resisting and getting used to it, I really believe some of these things might get better. We also have to just get more funding in the system for training. So uh, we wanted to be out here to lift up the experiences of New Yorkers. Uh, right now, we're going to call on Louis uh, Daniel Favors from Meg not Meg Evans, Senator. Center for Law and Justice and uh, Common Cause, who we're going to come up and uh, speak about what they're doing and, of course, what they do. Susan Lerner and Rose, thank you. Good morning. Are you able to hear me okay? Great. My name is Larie Daniel Favors. I'm the Interim Executive Director at the Center for Law and Social Justice. And I want to echo the comments and, and uh, stand in solidarity with the comments just uttered uh, by the public advocate, because what we saw yesterday was truly the conflagration of good efforts and poor execution as it pertains to communities of African descent. In this past legislative session, New York State ushered in a wave of voter reforms which were sorely and desperately needed. For years, advocates have talked about the need for voters to have access to the polls and greater access to the franchise. Those uh, reforms included things like early voting, which we saw in action this past week, consolidated primaries, voter-friendly ballots, and many other measures that were designed to give greater access to the franchise. 
And yet, what we saw yesterday after the successes of early voting shows that there is far more work to be done. We applaud those early voting successes, and at the same time, we recognize that particularly in communities of African descent, there were issues that, were, that arose that should have and could have been prevented. What that signals for us is that as we prepare for November, if we look at this as a trial run, which no one ever should when it comes to a, 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 an election in any cycle, but if we look at this as the first trial of many of these measures, what we know is that we have to prepare now so that the election that takes place in November is equitable and provides equitable access to the ballot for all voters. What we saw was that there were a number of absentee ballots that were mailed late or simply never received. There were many poll sites that were moved and notice was never provided. Many voters received either a presidential ballot but not their state ballot or vice versa. I know that this is something that all New Yorkers were dealing with, but I also know that this was heavily prevalent in communities of African descent. We are calling on the Board of Elections now and voting advocates now to begin preparing for what is coming in November. We are going to have a monumental election, one that is going to determine the outcome and the impacts of our communities for generations to come. We are requiring and demanding that the Board of Election collaborate with, uh, with advocates so that we are clear from top to bottom about how these reforms will work, so that we are clear about our messaging to voters, so that voters get access to the information that they need, so that when they go to a poll site and that poll site is not there, they have information ahead of time that will direct them to where they should properly go. We know that there should never be a voter who is only receiving half of a ballot or inaccurate access to the ballot. And so we are looking at yesterday as a time for us to learn from the, the positives and to learn from the mistakes so that we can implement reforms so that when November comes, we are fully prepared. That preparation cannot begin in September. It cannot begin in August. It must begin today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Susan Lerner. I'm the Executive Director of Common Cause New York, and I am delighted to be here with Public Advocate Jamani Williams and my colleague, Laurie Daniels Favors. Um, like the rest of the country, New York is experiencing an unprecedented primary election cycle with the explosion of requests for absentee ballots. The vast majority of people in New York City who requested an absentee ballot did get them. However, a significant number did not, and that is never acceptable. So we need to start planning for November today, uh, as has previously been said, to make sure that the city hit hardest by the pandemic has its voice heard in the November presidential election. And that means Albany needs to pass election need reform now. Senator Biagi's bill, which was mentioned by the public advocate, would extend absentee balloting for November. And that is absolutely essential because the boards of elections need time to plan. In April, the governor made a change which was really significant, forcing the boards of elections to take what has been a very minor program and turn it in the space of 60 days into what we believe is probably the prevalent way in which people voted. In 2016, there were 115,000 absentee ballots. This year, in 60 days, 1.7 million voters across the state, more than 700,000 of them here in New York City, asked for absentee ballots. The vast majority received them. That is an extraordinary and virtually impossible challenge, which the board did do a credible job in meeting. But the, what happened on election day provides instruction of what needs to be changed. Early voting actually went very well. To its credit, the New York City Board of Elections expanded early voting locations adding an additional 18 early voting locations. And early voting allows crowds to be dispersed over time and to have a better opportunity to follow the CDC health guidelines. So we need to be sure that for November, more voters are aware of and take advantage of early voting. But the problems that we saw on election day have to be solved before November. Uh, the public advocate talked about the late opening of polling places a perennial problem, but one that we believe was exacerbated by the fact that the trains, the subways, did not start to run until 5 o'clock in the morning. Poll workers need to be at their polling places by 5 in order to open 
by six and advocates and the board of elections were in discussions with the governor's office far in advance of yesterday's election and obviously the problem was not completely solved everyone needs to be assured in november that poll workers will be able to get to their assigned polling places on time in the morning and we need the governor to work with the city and the board of elections to solve that problem poll workers across several counties as has been pointed out gave out incomplete ballots that ends up disenfranchising voters it is never acceptable um, we believe that whether it was incompetence a mere mistake or malintent voters have to receive the correct ballot we'll be aggressively following up with the board to see what happened but we suspect initially that it's a training problem finally if new yorkers want to overhaul their elections if they want to be uh, met with efficient poll well-educated poll workers in well-appointed carefully selected polling places then we have to get to work now um, and we need to look to the governor and the legislature who chronically underfund our boards of elections and who until last year shirked all election reforms it's time to fight for a professional elections administration rather than a partisan system which we have now which party politicians are all too happy to let languish in the 19th century. It's time for a change, and it's Albany that needs to make that change. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Susan, uh, for that. And I also want to uh, thank um, Louis for lifting up what was happening in, in, in uh, it affected the entire New York City, but we did see specifically in certain communities um, and I forgot to mention that we were getting complaints so much so um, the night before about uh, poll sites being moved with no information, uh, no previous information, particularly, uh, as we mentioned, in some of the uh, black communities across the city. We sent a letter to the governor, uh, CC, uh, Senator Schumer and Gillibrand, saying that we might even need a federal monitor to come in uh, and take a look at what was going on. So we were very concerned uh, about what we had heard happening. Um, but the general, the, general, um, the general consensus here is that November's coming. We know this was rough based on the pandemic, uh, but we just have to do better. What we, what we should recognize now is that voters are clamoring to get to the polls. So very often we see loader voter turnout, uh, but what we are seeing now is that people want to get to the polls, and the easier that we make it to get them to get to the polls, um, is the better for our civic society. And we have to make sure the infrastructure is there and the resources are there for people to access that right to vote. We didn't see that all yesterday. We know November's coming, exponentially more people. We wanna make sure we get it right. Um, I know that some people may have different off topic questions. So for right now, let's just focus if everybody has any questions about what happened yesterday. Any questions about yesterday? Okay, I think maybe one person had anything off topic question? About anything else? No? Okay, peace everybody, thank you.